You're listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Episode 8. Thanks very much for listening. This is the Catholic Family Podcast. I'm Kevin Davis. And today I'm very happy to be joined by three of my friends from Austria. Three ladies, three lovely ladies, three sisters from Austria. That That's not the country with the kangaroos, by the way. That's the one right directly next to me over here next to Germany. Actually, five minutes away from me. I could walk easily over here to Austria, but not to these three. They're a little bit farther away. But today we're going to talk a bit about pro-life, the importance of the, the pro-life message, and how these three are involved in, in the entire idea and in the mentality and in the belief system of, of pro-life and how they would advise people to also get involved and to be a part of it. So ladies, I'm going to introduce you one at a time. First, Vero, you're the oldest. So, so please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, um, my name is Veronica. Um, yeah, I'm like 20, uh, 25 years old and I grew up at the very west of Austria and now I'm living at the very east of Austria in Vienna. Um, I'm studying here. I'm doing the master in music education and yeah, I love it here. It's great. <laughs> okay. And now you, Natalie? Yeah, I'm sister number two. I'm Natalie. Um, I don't live as far away from where we grew up now. I live in Innsbruck and go to school here. And what do you go to school for? I'm in medical school and also in humanities, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, okay, perfect. And Reze, number three, sister number three? Well, hello, I'm the little one. <laughs> and I also grew up with my sisters there in the very west of Austria. And now I'm in Belgium right now. I'm in a school of asylum building in the second year. And you're... <laughs> So Wait, what, what again are you in school for? You're in school for what again? Violin buildings. Uh huh. Right. So, so, so we have a musician, a musician, and a violin builder, right? And then a, a medical student. So definitely uh, an eclectic group of the the <laughs> the <Aaron Berger ladies. laughs> we represent the entire pro life movement. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect. And so and so I don't know who wants to answer this, but. Obviously, this show is, is about Catholic culture and Catholic values and, and traditional Catholicism. And so uh, you you three are all cradle traditional Catholics. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. And how does that happen? Is that is that from a long line of your family or or how did how did you become cradle Catholics? Well, <laughs> well, Sorry, we, um, have beca- we never have become cradle Catholics. We've always been that. <laughs> yeah. But why? why who, who started that? Where did that come from? Our grandparents they realized that something's wrong <laughs> with modern church, and yeah, they left and and since then first went with FFSPX, but then realized okay, no, it's a bit more than that. Yeah, now we're where we are. <laughs> so, so the grandparents already left during the the Vatican after the Vatican changes and then your parents yes. and then you. Yeah. So. First, they were very involved in the church. And then mm-hmm. when the whole shifting happened, they slowly, um, yeah, got further away from there. Yeah. Like I think everything. It's, it's, One step at a time. Yeah. It's interesting. I think we have a very different idea now of, of say the and, and because we've been able to see it from generations, but for our grandparents, I think that was crazy times where they had to step mm, yeah. back and say, Hey, look, the church that I was just in is no longer the church. I think that that's pretty incredible. So thank you to our grandparents, right? Yeah, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely heroes. Yeah. Because she was always very involved and very the talkative person. And then for her, it was a hard step to get out of there because, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. they friends. basically had to break with everything. Right, right. You lose your 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 friends and I'm sure some of your family and, and many mm-hmm. of your, your traditions and, and it's all because of, of the truth. Yes. Yeah. But that's why we're here, right? That that's that's what true Catholics are about is to <laughs> not not mm-hmm. hold on to anything and only be here for the truth. And and so ladies, did you have you all been involved with the pro life um activities or, or organizations at the same time or, or or who started that? Well actually our oldest sister started. Yeah, maybe Mira wants to talk about that. <laughs> mm, well, we went to our first Pro Life March in Berlin, 2014. 
And after that, yeah, we, it was always in our mind, or it was always in my mind. I always thought, we have to do something. I want to do something. And then I wrote a poor life group on Facebook, and they invited us to an event. And then we saw there, like, there was a poor life tour. It's called poor life tour. It's like a big hike from one town to another town, like 100 kilometers in a week. And they did this through our region. And there we took part, Reese and me. And actually, I was just one day there. And Reese was three days, four days. And they had a great time. Um, yes. nice. And yeah, after that, we just joined the pro-life group in our region. We realized there are want to, they, they wanted to build up groups there and just joined some other girls there. And so this group, is that run by Christians or, or, or Catholics, modern Catholics, or who runs these groups? Yeah, so that's Jugend für das Leben. Um, they, I think that, yeah, they started uh, in Austria, but now they also exist in Germany. But this, yeah, in Austria, it's, uh, they're officially Catholic, modern Catholic, but yeah. Um, yes, and all members have to be Catholic too, and yeah. Interesting, okay. And so, so no other Christian denominations are, are allowed. Well, you can be, well, you can um, um, take part um, as a non-Christian, though, but um, you can't be like an official member where you get mm -hmm. this um, sign, this paper, where is your name on it, and there's on it. Well, you're a member of the organization, but you surely can take Just part everywhere. Yeah. Well, right now, I'm not sure if they changed it already. Changed it to being anyone's accepted or... Yeah, yes, because there running. also came Bethany Jensen from America. And yeah. she, yeah, and she is a uh, free Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yes, she really helps the, in the movement, in the pro-life movement. And they're good now kind of every every person involved <laughs> yes but for that they've started a somehow an organization that has grown from Jugend für das Leben and that's more open it's called Pro, mm -hmm. Pro Life Europe and there literally anyone can take um, can be active and mm -hmm. yeah so that's more open and so are the three of you members of, of this group we are members yeah yes. mm -hmm. yeah gotcha and a active members yeah Yes. <laughs> so, so active. Are you still active, even though you're all three separate and you're in very different places? Are you still active in your own cities, or is it more when you get together? No, we're active all in our place. In in the beginning, we were all together in our hometown and started mm -hmm. this group there. But now, I think we're all very different, uh, differently active on our own. Yeah, on our own way. Mm -hmm. And so, so. What are you what what are you doing right now, Natalie? We'll start with you. What what is the thing that you're actively doing right now for the pro life movement? Um, I'm mostly well. I'm a vice um, press or spokesperson for Jugend für das Leben, so I basically just I'm invisible, but I write stuff for them. Um, like we send out newsletters, things like that, or um, help with press re releases. Um, and I also I. I'm the guide of the group of the university group here in Innsbruck. Um, yeah, that's about cool. that. And we we normally we would do a lot of <laughs> many things, but now the last year has been a little bit weird. You know, we can't really meet and um, do a lot. But yeah, that's what I do. Okay, and Reza, what what do you do right now? Well, I'm actually not that active because I went to another country and didn't know anybody here. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty difficult. But then I met a girl and also Christian and we talked about it and she would be also very in. And well, but it's hard to start a group, especially when you know that the others are really not very pro-life. And then you're kind of afraid and you started just a new thing with violin buildings. So I'm not really active right now, but I just got a message just yesterday from Bethany that there is a leadership um, education that I should join in February. 
um, how to lead a group. And I think that will encourage me to really start something because I really want to do something. I did in Austria quite some things and now I kind of miss it okay. <laughs> to fight cool. for something. All right. Perfect. Yeah. And <laughs> good. And Vera, what are you up to these days? Um, well, I, I changed a bit because now I'm doing more of the music stuff. <laughs> Um, I was like, uh, yeah, group leader too and organizing things. Um, but now I would like to do more like music for the Marches for Life and yeah, just um, help the whole organization and the movement with music and more of the creative things. And is there a headquarters for this? Sorry? Is there a headquarters? Where, where is this group based? Is, this in, is it in Germany, like Berlin, or is it where, where is the headquarters, the, the main base of this uh, movement well the office where like where, when you write the organization um, the office is in Linz that's yeah between the very west and the very east like in the middle of Austria um, yeah but we don't meet there very often so it's kind of a, a we'd say a grassroots group it's kind of spread out people all over the place and no central organization that's bringing people all together so i know like you said vero that the the main or one of the main marches is in berlin and I, I went to one of those i think maybe 2017 and it's a pretty incredible experience because first of all of course you have the the groups of, of pro-life people marching mm -hmm. and holding crosses and signs and then on the other side you know across the streets pretty much you have these anti um pro-life protesters so the anti-protesters who are really pretty nuts and, and, and really extremely um, extreme. And I think that that's mm -hmm. something that I'm fairly surprised that as, especially when you are a young girl or when you're young girls, how was that something that you you didn't get afraid of? Why, why did you gravitate towards that rather than away from that? Hmm. Well, it encouraged me actually more when I saw them, I was, and they shouted arguments that, which didn't have to do anything with what we were fighting for, that they kind of didn't really get what we what we want to say and for what we go on the street. So it encouraged me more to talk more to them or to give them a better, a clear statement what I'm doing here. Yeah. I don't like it if they don't understand what we're doing. And is that something... Is that something you're all in university now. Is that something that you, is it a real struggle with that? Is it something that people are, uh, are aggressively pro-choice or they're aggressively against pro-life people? Or is it just kind of not really an issue? From what I've seen, um, the people I'm surrounded by, they're not aggressively pro-choice or anti-pro-life. Um, but they, it's more that they, they're not, they don't think about the topic at all but yeah, if they, they had to take sides they would definitely be on the pro-choice side just mm -hmm. because they haven't given much thought to it um mm -hmm. yeah but i haven't been really exposed to <laughs> aggression or anything except for at the pro-life marches right which and then, it's, the and then it's crazy it's yes. crazy yeah and yes. you have all the craziest people probably in all of berlin come out mm -hmm. to these streets and it's you, you can't believe yeah, unless no. you've been on these marches you can't believe these people are wild and they, they look, they look nuts. Yeah. yeah it's just hate. It is. It's it is. Absolutely hate. Hate. And it must be. And I think for me, as, as Natalie says, I mean, it's, you see that many of these people, most of the people are just, they're uninformed and they, they listen to what quote unquote science is telling them that this is not a human. But, but I, I think to, to me, I guess I was raised Catholic as well. It's such an obvious thing that, you can't just say something to be so and then make it be so, which which I think modern science tries to do. I think deep down people have to know that they, they know for certain that that is a, a human being in the belly. And I mean, I, I think the devil has a real grasp on the whole thing. It's mm -hmm. pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think most people do know, but then they they come up with the craziest excuses. Then they say once they've accepted that, OK, it's a human, then they're saying okay it's a human but not a person yet or things like that and it just in the end it doesn't make sense you can't 
it doesn't make sense. Like for your conscience, it won't work. I saw I saw recently a I think I don't know an actress or a singer or I don't even know who she is, but she was on the she's trending on Twitter. And apparently a few years ago, she said something about how she's very pro-choice and can't imagine anyone not being pro-choice and and anyone who is pro-life is kind of an idiot. And then she came out this year a few days ago and said that she is extremely happy and proud to announce that she has a human being inside of her and Mm -hmm. she can't wait to meet that human being. It's just like... Mm -hmm. What is going on here? I mean, what what is mm-hmm. the the disconnect? And it's it's yeah. it's wild. I think. Yeah, you really you you don't understand it. And if a baby is wanted, then you you're throwing parties and having baby showers, and it's a baby, and you're like no question about it. And then if it's unwanted or if it's not perfect or the way you wanted it to be, then it's not a person and it's not it's a baby shame, and it yeah. doesn't get human sho- uh, baby showers. Yeah. Right, I mean, right. These people will be they will be at one of these marches. And, you know, protesting, holding up the most disgusting signs you could Mm. ever imagine, really. I mean, really, Mm. you cannot imagine them unless you've seen them. And then I guarantee you they go to their friends and their their sisters and their brothers and these these people are having babies and they congratulate them. Mm. It's it's so backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they often claim that their their side is all about love, too. It's just about loving women. Yeah. But really, it's not what you use. You you notice it right away at a march when they just they shout hate. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so I guess from this, why, why do you think it's important to be directly involved in trying to spread the message of, of life and, and, and to spread the message of the, the, the thing in there is not a thing. It's a person, it's a human life, it's a soul. And I mean, why is it important to actively do that? Not just passively sit by and let something happen. Well, if you want something to be changed, um, well, yeah, you can pray, you should pray, but then you have to do something, pray again, maybe, Um, just do something, anything, because um, if you're all waiting, then, yeah, then it just happens, and (laughs) still waiting, and it still happens, it doesn't go on. And I've I've heard some people comment on these pro-life organizations that they are not necessarily all in or they're not necessarily all catholic and that you may just be wasting your time in in an organization that may end up being more political than moral or than catholic i mean is that something that you've you've seen as being a problem do you think it's ever been a waste of your time in terms of actually trying to change minds no i I don't i don't think Mm. it's primarily a religious question Mm. i mean for religious people it makes even more sense to be pro-life because of God and because of religion and because of hu- humans having a soul. But you don't have to be a religious person. And it can be very well about politics, too, too and just ethics and human rights. That makes total sense to me. But as a Catholic, I mean, I mean for example, there are, there are many different issues in the world that are anti-Catholic and anti-God. I mean, I've done shows about Netflix and the evils that are on Netflix. So I yeah. guess the question is, why why are you involved in pro-life movements and not anti-Hollywood movements? <laughs> um, well, it all it's all one big block of problems, I would say, one big issue. It's all... Um, but then, also, you have to take what, what comes your way, you know? I don't think that everyone gets the chance, maybe, to um, be really actively pro-life, or some people focus on... Um, exposing the gender mainstream lies everyone can do something different but it's important to do something and it feels good too mm-hmm. and and we so, can, so, we, sorry no no go go ahead sorry uh we still can like in the poor life organization still can live our faith and show them our faith and maybe a bit more about traditional catholic stuff and yeah it's not said that you don't can live your faith in the group too. Yeah, and so it's nothing you've ever had to compromise your traditional Catholic beliefs for modern Catholic beliefs or Christian Christian beliefs. It's never been an issue. Mm-hmm. Like like you don't have to end a march <laughs> in, in a in a, in a modern Catholic cathedral and, and have a mass or something. I guess is what I'm well, trying to yeah, say. Well, yeah, they do this, but we don't have to. We just, yeah. No, it's, right. well, it's, it's like, yeah, like the uncomfortable part 
where we just have to say again no <laughs> like everywhere yeah it's interesting though too that um, many many members of the Jugend für das Leben for example are traditional and are conservative mm -hmm, and in Latin mass <laughs> yeah even though not say the Vacantis. But right. Still. Yeah, you know, one step at a time. One step at a <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but it, it's a good point. I mean, I think I think it's an important thing as a whole that as state of a contest. I mean, I think that's kind of a dirty word in a way because mm. that's not what we want to be. We, yeah, I mean, we, don't. we have to be because that is the truth. But we want to just be traditional Catholics. We want mm -hmm. to follow the church and that that's simply it. We and don't even if, have to be traditional yeah. Catholic. Yeah, be. I always say I'm a Catholic <laughs> with a traditional city vacante position, but I'm Catholic. right. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. And, and, and it all comes down to terms and stuff, obviously, in that mm -hmm. case. But mm -hmm. but I think that it is a dangerous thing as state of a contest that we we get into a shell and, and we hide a little bit and we don't want mm -hmm. to get outside of our group. And we're a little afraid of of meeting people that are from the SSPX or, or from the Nova Soto because, because they're not one of us. And right. I think that that's, that's a dangerous thing because I think, mm. don't we want them to be in the truth, right? I mean, isn't that our yeah, job to go and spread that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely. Yeah. That has always been the job of any missionary or in any field, in any. Yeah. Right now topic. we don't have to go to Africa for a mission. We have it here. <laughs> we can't do it. Just around the like, corner. Yeah. Where we live. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Just, and then it, for life. Right. Because when you when people are also they're just there and talking and say yeah uh, abortions are maybe not that good but they're exceptions then you also shouldn't be just quiet because you're afraid you should you should just show them that you have a different opinion and even though you can't really explain it just to show that you think that the human being also to be in there and very um, well courageous. <laughs> Just and up, it's and when you have Catholic faith or you are already different, you maybe are already used to this. Mm -hmm. some things. <laughs> you should be. I, that, that's a really good point. I, I think as traditional Catholics, as Catholics, again, traditional out of it, we're we're just Catholics, and mm -hmm. we should be courageous, and we should be obviously against the world because the world is is part of what's trying to corrupt us. You know, the world, the flesh, and the devil that is trying to bring us from God. And so we have to have the courage. And that's part of why I had you, why I wanted to have you three on for a show, because I've seen that with the three of you. I see these, these three Austrian girls out there really fighting for truth and fighting for something, fighting for one of the portions of what needs to be fought. And, and I don't see that much, honestly. I mean, I see, I, I, and I'm, I'm all over the place on social media and I've seen plenty of people in America and in Germany and, and people do their parts, but a lot of people try to do this fight on Twitter and Facebook. And it's like, Nobody cares. You, you tell them one thing on Twitter and then eight seconds later, it's it's gone. They see the mm -hmm. next thing. And I think that I, I've been inspired by you three because you you do go out there. You you actually hit oh, the streets. Thanks. You hit the streets <laughs> and you say, hey, look, you know, this is wrong and we're going to change that. And I think that that's what I want, you know, anyone listening to this to 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 get that and say, hey, you know, find that thing. If it's not the pro-life movement, find something. Go fight for something. And I think that that's There's awesome. so much. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Totally. And I think as Catholics, oh. we automatically have this, We, as you said, we're, we're used to being uh, attacked or um, we, we're in this offensive position. But through organizations like Jugend fürs Leben or Pro-Life Europe, we can actually get proactive, not just mm -hmm. react to, to um, attacks or whatnot mm -hmm. um, and do something, yeah, proactively. Right. Yeah, and that's exactly that's what we need to do. And obviously, this all goes without saying that, that the most important is is our prayer life and our own lives. I mean, we can't we can't go and try to convert others and try to fix the world before we are ourselves, you know, the best Catholics that we can be. And that's the biggest objective and the biggest difficulties any of us will have. But yeah, I mean, we, we should be trying to con convert people and to to teach them the truth. And I think that's something that I also wanted to talk about is how how do you do that? How do you be aggressive and out there on the streets, but also do it in a manner of of love and, and joy that will actually convince people? Well, well I think it's not so difficult. Um, if you if you're convinced that you have the truth on your side, um, then you can say whatever you want to say or do whatever you want to do. And um Nothing, nothing will get to you. Like no, no negative reactions. Um, yeah, just because you know that the truth is on your side. 
But how do you, and so how do you literally do it? How, how, what's the, <laughs> how, what's the process? I mean, do you walk down the street with smiles on your faces? I mean, what, what's the way, I mean, how do you three want to change someone's heart? Well, first smiling is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> <Agreed? Yeah. laughs> and then most of the time when you just go to the people and you're interested in them and you want to know first what they are thinking and what's their opinion and then just to ask questions and what they think for you want to understand them and then you give your arguments and you have the better arguments because they're just true and that's then maybe that's one way how to do it but there are several ways i think yeah i think it's a new a new strategy <clears throat> um like in earlier years they first tried out with showing all the horrifying pictures and yeah maybe um yeah saying well it's your fault and it's not okay what you're doing and yeah get it's a bit more aggressive maybe uh, and like a new strategy now is, um, well, uh, well, I try not to see them as enemies. I just try them to see as a human and um, take them serious and try to show them that I take them serious. And uh, I really want to understand what they're saying. And then we're like, yeah, talking and they tell me just what they say, and I just say what I think. And it's not like um, I have in mind. I have to. I have to um, change his mind. I have to change his mind. I just think, okay, I'm listening, and I hope I'm. I'm praying. By the way, um, um, when I talk with them, I'm praying a bit, and then I talk again, <laughs> and then I just pray. Yeah, I hope that um, we just planted a seed in his heart, a seed uh, which could probably change his mind, and maybe the person thinks about it. Yeah, I think that that's that's I think it seems to be the best way to do it. And I think that there have been different ways in the past. I mean, I think it depends on the society. Honestly, you look at the saints who went and spread the faith through different countries and some went and, you know, slammed their fist and said, you know, change your ways or, or you're 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 done for. And some went and and really did it in a much more kind and, and, and gentle manner. Now, both, I think, had their place and both are. I think godly, these were saints doing it and it worked, but I think you need to know what works and what doesn't work. And I think that, that you see oftentimes now that people try this very aggressive approach and and try to condemn and point fingers. And, and from what I've seen, it, it just doesn't work. The people mm -hmm. of these days, at least, need to convince themselves. They don't need to be convinced. Yeah. You need to, like you okay. said, you said yeah. plant the seed and they have to make the decision because you're not going to change their mind in, in five minutes on the street. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, you have to show them the truth. Maybe but sometimes we show them like we ask them, um, have you ever seen an abortion? How it works? And then they say no. Then we just ask, okay, are you interested in yeah, maybe a video who shortly shortly describes how it works? And then yeah, if they agree, then we just show them a short clip and say, Well, that's fact, that's truth, that's how it works. But um yeah, we want something else for women and for children. Yes, and most of the time we also have a flyer that they just have something they can go back for. That they just hear it and then they can check on the internet or wherever or go somewhere. Right. Yeah, so and I, I think, think it takes, I think it needs both this um, loving approach, but then also mm -hmm. showing the harsh reality at one point, maybe not in the very beginning, mm -hmm. but just to get the image of the of the aggressive hateful pro-lifer out of their head but once you've right. shown that you're you're you just want to love them and spread the truth then you can also show the ugly well, well that's the point though the, the actual action of abortion is the ugliness you don't have to be mm -hmm. ugly you, you just yeah. showed them i mean the, the, what they are what they're for what they stand for or did hopefully not anymore is the ugly act and so you don't mm -hmm. have to be ugly i think that that's a that's a really good point Mm -hmm. But that's probably also why people just don't want to see it. They don't want to, I mean, obviously, they don't want to acknowledge that they did something or doing something ugly. Right. And it's an uncomfortable thing, right? People don't yeah. want mm -hmm. the uncomfortable, if, if they've had it or they've had someone, they, they know someone who, who's had these issues and they don't, the whole, there's a big issue with society is they don't want to judge. You know, it's all about don't judge mm -hmm. people. Don't judge anyone about anything. It's like, that's definitely not how things should be. Now, you don't 
condemn someone, but you absolutely can judge if someone's doing something wrong. That that this is okay, but society's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> Only judging or what's in. Yeah, of course you do exactly. And and I mean, as far as the sinners, as as they say, you you love the sinners and you hate the mm -hmm. sin, and that that's yeah, that's, it. that's the point. I mean, you're not yeah. going to get them with vinegar; you're going to get them with honey and show yeah. them their their evil ways. But I mean, I think that's it's an example too of of any again any issue or any example of of living your Catholic life is the best way to do it is by your example, right? I mean, if if you're trying to get across that we are not these evil cultish people who who are like you know practice witchcraft in the basement which i think many people think i mean yeah you know, the, the catholics catholics these days have a bad it's a bad image and so we have to convince them by the way we dress by the way we act by the way we speak that our way is the right way mm -hmm. and that's why i love going to pro-life marches because there there's always Normal people, hundreds, <laughs> hopefully, uh, many people, nice people, normal people, families um, that represent the real pro-life movement. And that's why marches are so awesome. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, you see these marches in, in Washington, D.C., and they have tens of thousands of people. And, mm -hmm. and the media will make it sound like these are a bunch of you know crazies. And then you watch the videos and they're totally that they're all respectful. They're nicely dressed. They're they're. They're walking in, in nice lines. They're praying the rosary. And, and that's that's how you have to convince people. Exactly. You convince them by your actions and, and not necessarily by you know screaming in their faces. And I, I wanted to ask you three, have you ever had a personal experience of convincing someone either of, of, of becoming that they should become pro-life or if of convincing someone not to have an abortion? Well, I talked to several people for getting or being in a pro-life group just in front of the in front of the university in Innsbruck. But yeah, and then I wrote down they were interested, and I wrote down their names and the contacts and um, to send them the newsletters always. But then with a friend here, a girl, I also talked with her about it, and then at one point she just said. Well, she doesn't want to think about it anymore because it's too crazy. And there she just stopped. She said, just no, because I just had the better argument. She couldn't say anything anymore, but she didn't want. But well, I just let it rest. And she yeah. yeah, maybe you planted the seed. Right. Um, yeah. We were, went to like um, street. We made, did these street talks where we just went on streets and asked strangers what they think. Um, when maybe when human life starts or um, if they know how abortion works and there are always pretty interesting talks there um, and well we could sometimes like change minds from guys who said well they're they're fine if their girlfriend um, aborts and then maybe well um, after showing them <laughs> the video how um abortion really is and um, then they said okay no and um, well they don't want this for their girlfriend that that happens but um i never had it like a woman who said she want to abort now and then after talking with me said no she don't want to abort anymore right i think it's that happens well not on streets that often maybe. right but yeah you can change minds or plant the seed on streets of course i think the the final fruits of um, talking to people or convincing people that's more what people in pregnancy crisis centers see mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. um, yeah because they are really involved in the with pregnant women we really just I think it's more common for us to plant many seeds mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and to yeah. tell them the alternatives that's a very important point yes. tell them there are these organizations who want to help the woman in crisis and that there are so many alternatives yeah i think for, for from my experience it's easier to deal with someone who is strongly against it than to deal with someone who just doesn't really care or someone who just they're just very we, I, I, my family would say very whelming. They just, it's just on the, the lukewarm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it happens, bad happens. And, and mm -hmm. it's just not my problem. And I think that that's the kind of person I think is very hard because you don't, you can't 
there's no seed to plant because they, they just don't really care. And I see that more and more in our society with really most issues that, that people, there's no like I'm standing steadfast, you know, for, for women's rights. And there are those people, but most people just sit back and let it happen. And mm -hmm. I think they don't that, take positions at all anymore. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think, I think even, even the Catholics in public are afraid to take positions because they're, they're, Mm. There, you need that courage to stand up and say, "Hey, look, yeah, I'm going against the mainstream and against what culture is trying to tell everybody, and I, I may get a few moments of hate, and it's, it's uncomfortable." Yeah. yeah. But I think, I think, as with anything, if you get past that moment of weakness and you get out on the streets, as you said, you feel better. You feel like I, I'm in this mm -hmm. fight and, and Catholics are fighters. I mean, the, the yes. bishop comes to us and confirms us and smacks us on the cheek <laughs> to say you, you are a soldier of Christ. And I think that's yeah. important. Yeah. And I think you can grow in it, too, and you can get used to um, attacks oh, yeah. or to, to negative responses. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. And yeah. It gets easier and better. You can, you can also be proud if you fight for for the good thing, for the truth, and yeah, when you get hate from the world, that's just how it happens. That's just normal. You can be prepared because it stands already in the Bible, and then it just, it's the right thing, actually, when you know that the world hates you for this. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly right. I mean, Christ says that, that you will be you will be persecuted like me mm -hmm. if you're one of my followers, and so if we're not persecuted, then we must be doing something wrong. I mean, I, that, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, it's, it's honestly yeah. true, because... It means yeah. we're too much a part of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it is that that first step. So I mean, how how would you three suggest for people to to take that first step? What 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 is that moment of courage they need? How how do they gear themselves up to to that moment of taking the first step into fighting? Just kick yourself into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to to do do that big, a huge step. You can start with like writing an email to an organization if they need help, or just attending a march and yeah, maybe meeting some new people there and organizations there. You don't have to like um, speak on a march and organize. Or, Organize, or organize, organize, organize a march um, at the first step. Um, yeah, it can be a very small step, but lots of small steps make one huge step. And then, yeah, you're just into it. Yes, the first thing maybe is really to have another person at first, because very alone, it's so hard. Just one person and then two together can already do so many things. Right. And, and I mean, and, and again, our society has fallen to where it is because good men do nothing in the face of evil and, and women, of course, too. <laughs> that, that they, let, they let this happen. And I think if, as you say, if one person stands up, it's easier for the second and then it's easier for the third. Yeah, and it's yeah. easier and easier really? progressively. Yeah. But, but there are so few people who are willing to be that first person to stand up. And again, it doesn't have to be against abortion, doesn't have to be pro-life, but find something to fight for. Because as we see daily, every day, there's more and more offenses against God. And that, that's what mm. that's what we have to stand up and, and fight against. Mm. I would also encourage people to really attend a march. And there's not only this annual one big march in Vienna or in Berlin, there's actually many in Austria. There's in every capital, there's one every year. And there's um, they've started now Sundays for Life, where they go every first Sunday in, uh, in the month. They go on the streets as a small group. Um, so it's really not difficult, and it's it won't take a lot of courage to do that. Just a little time and will, and it helps a lot. Well, and, and think of it this way too, right? I mean, if you change one person's mind, if you if you save one soul in your entire life, in, in any all of the hours you spend on the street or, or, or for me doing podcasts, that's the only reason I do podcasts because <laughs> if I save one person, if I make one person think twice about sinning or about, you know, being pro-choice or whatever it is, and that's enough. It, it doesn't have to be every time you go out on the streets that you have someone coming up and like, Oh, you, you changed my entire world. Yeah. I mean, you need mm -hmm. one person. And that, that's, I think if you look at it that way, then it, it does. I mean, it's all easier. And it's, and like you say, it's, it's uplifting. It, it gives you strength because to fight is what we are meant to do. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so how do people, I mean, I don't know if you guys know the 
uh, maybe it, it's a, it's a really too general of a question, but what's your recommendation to get started anywhere? I mean, it's easy to say in Austria, but for anyone in the U.S. or in England or people listen in India, what, what what's the first step do you think for them to do? Google, do research. <laughs> if there's some some group in your area, um, or maybe if it's not in your area, maybe you can do something online for them, work with them, or just get to talk to people. Um, yeah, talk yeah. with maybe with a friend and just ask him, hey, have you heard about this? And do you know, like, that um, there are so, so many babies killed every year? Have you heard about that? Just, yeah ask them talk with people yes inform yourself a little bit about your country and what is it is really about mm -hmm. and then you can just in a group or just with a person have a different opinion <laughs> and then well and look how it goes and for sure there will there will come out something good even though you can't see it maybe but if you say the truth there's always you're always planting something good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yep, yeah, that's exactly right. I think that that's a that's a good place to end it. Um, I really appreciate having you, ladies, on. Do you have anything to add to end the show, or anything to say? Uh, keep up the good fight. <laughs> keep up. God will fight. win. Truth will win. Viva Cristo. <laughs> K viva. K viva. And also on Friday, next Friday. There's also a TV show, uh, the, mm -hmm. the movie Unplanned. Mm -hmm. It gets streamed on the internet. And after this, there's also a discussion, mm -hmm. an online Q &A discussion. session. Yes. And also for people from all over the world, <laughs> they can just watch it and get the information or also talk other people to watch it. Just for see I'm it. sure you know Unplanned, right? The movie? Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so this one, this time the live stream will be followed by a, a live Q and A with Abby Johnson. So the person okay. the movie's all about. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that, that's a, it's a tough movie to watch. Anyone who's yes. watched it, it, it's difficult. I mean, it's like I, there's also another one called um, Gosnell, the making of a a Ooh, serial yeah. killer. Also really yeah. really tough to watch, but but very impactful. It really shows you again that the true amazing devilish evils that that abortion in, in the entire process is but it, it is a very it's a very touching movie and, and it shows that this lady who ran a clinic and, and converted and and changed her ways and so it, that that's awesome though if she's going to be part of this live stream that's definitely something that people should should be in touch with and share because if you're already pro-life then yeah share it to your friends share it on facebook what do you have to lose yeah. i mean it, yeah. it's not going to hurt anything i mean share these yeah. things because maybe again that one facebook share maybe it seems ridiculous but it could change one person's mind about the whole matter and that that's that's all we could possibly ever ask for i will attach that show um in the link maybe you ladies can send me that mm -hmm. that link to that yeah. and i'll catch that in the show um so that's this friday what what what's that date the fifth february 5th i think february 5th okay and tomorrow is the March for Life in Washington D.C., but they're they're just doing it online too, I think. So ah, okay. that gets uh, streamed too. So maybe someone wants to join. I think Matthew West is singing, a Christian singer, and they yeah. have awesome speakers. <laughs> so you could join okay. there too. Let's oh, go to that's Washington. that's tomorrow already. Okay, yeah. All right, I'll attach I'll attach that link too. So I'll attach those two links. So, so things that you can immediately immediately do. You can share these things on Twitter, Facebook with your friends. Doesn't have I mean email, whatever it is. Um, these things could change somebody's mind and um, some is uh, a, a movie that is definitely worth um, I don't know if it's worth watching but it's definitely worth sharing if, if you're already pro-life you probably don't have to watch it but it's good to reinforce the idea of, mm. of really the evils of the entire thing and to be able to share that with your your family and friends um, I'll also attach um, I have links to I know I have links to Vero you, you have a YouTube channel Vero is a, an awesome singer the, all these three ladies mm. are very very good musicians and singers I, I absolutely love it they come to our music fest which that's another thing I'll have to <laughs> plug here I, I, everyone needs if everyone listening to this show needs to come to our music Music Fest, um, which yeah, is held every come. August uh, outside of Munich. We'll hold it again this year. If it's if yeah. Corona is still around, we'll just do it outside, right? So yeah, we're definitely of looking forward to that. Um, I'll share that link as well to these ladies. So please we support them. We could do them. live stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A live stream, a live stream Music Fest. Hey, that's, that's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Oh, uh, but, 
Okay. Exactly. <laughs> America. I mean, we had in 2019, we had nine different countries represented. Yeah, that was, was pretty so cool. Great. That yeah, was, was so cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> So who knows? Kevin, maybe 2020 maybe, again. Maybe you can also put the links in the description box about um, like from Pro-Life Europe or Jugend für das Leben, things like that, or Students for, for sure. Life for America. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Please, if you if you three can share those links with me in the next 15 minutes or whatever, or 20 minutes, then I will attach mm -hmm. those all to sure. this show. And this show will go on YouTube and, and Podbean. Uh, please share if you're listening to this, obviously, to try to spread the message and try to spread the 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 fight that these three ladies bring to the to the streets if they can do it you absolutely can too if you have any questions sure. for them send me an email to kevin89 davis at gmail.com if you have questions for them send it to me first and then i will filter it through to them and then if they want they can answer it i'm sure they be very happy to and willing to, but first send it through to me okay. if you have any questions. So ladies, thank you very much for being on. And, and I hope maybe we can do it again sometime and maybe we can do a, a live musical performance. Huh? Yes. <laughs> that would thank, be cool. Thank you yeah. so much, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Kevin. All right. Thanks, ladies. God bless. God bless. Bye. God bless you.